Hello my Elven Warriors, welcome back. This week I'm going to be making the Chimera from Percy Jackson. Alright, I'm going to need a skeleton for the Chimera, so I'm going to bend armature wire into position, and then I'm going to attach the legs to the spine. I'm going to bend the legs until they more accurately represent goat legs. The Chimera in the book is described as having goat legs and a goat body, so that's what mine is going to have. So that I can save money on clay, I'm going to begin wrapping the armature wire with aluminum foil to bulk up the sculpture. As far as I know, goats, lions, and snakes aren't made of aluminum foil, so I'm going to begin covering it with clay. They aren't made of clay either, but you know, I need to give it definition somehow. Alright, now that the first layer of clay has been added, I'm going to begin adding lumps of clay to his hind legs and smoothing them in using my fingers and a big ball stylus. Alright, after it's been baked, I'm going to add another fresh layer of clay on top so that I can begin to carve in a fur detail. But that's happening in the future. I got this brand new spoon tool. I like it a lot. It, it's very, very nice. Very nice. Now I'm adding a bunch of clay to the front legs uh, to make them look like front goat legs. I'm using an Ibex goat, uh, I think it's an Alpine Ibex goat as reference, so that's what the goat body looks like. Alright, now his back leg is all chonked up with clay. I'm going to begin blending the lumps of clay together and blending the leg to the rest of the body. This little lump of clay makes his little pointy ankle thing. The beginnings of the hoof are a lump of clay that then gets split in half, but my fingers are in the way so you can't see. I'm using some cos clay to make the little toe nubby hoof things. More clay for more leg muscle definition. After splitting the hoof down the center, I um, separate the hoof from the rest of the leg using a sculpting tool and pressing it in. I'm adding the goat's chest muscle things, which are big logs of clay smashed in and blended on with my spoon tool. But his back was looking a little flat, so I had a big snaky log of clay to his spine to give him a spine. Using thin strips of clay, I begin to lay them across the chest. Using a super, super small ball stylus, I begin pressing in scraggly, uneven lines to give it a fur texture. Is it convincing as fur? I don't know. Maybe you decide. For the rest of the fur texture, I use a small ball stylus and do a squiggly motion all over to give the illusion of fur. For the ridge of fur across the spine, I blend downward into the body. I begin tearing at the top of the fur to give it an uneven, furry texture. Using a sculpting tool with a nice edge on it, I begin to give the snake its belly segments.
I rolled out a big old ball of cos clay, squished it flat, and now I'm slicing the edges off of it. And now using my fingers, I begin to squish in his nose. Using a medium large ball stylus, I press in a neck hole. And then using a smaller large ball stylus, I press in his eyeball holes. He needs some cheek definition, so I add a lump of clay and blend that in. And his head starts getting blended onto his neck. Do snakes have a neck? Is their whole body its neck? But it's also its body. Anyways, his head gets sliced in half to make the mouth. And then I press in his little mouthy details using a ball stylus. And then using a smaller ball stylus, I begin to press in more mouthy details. Two pre-baked balls of clay get smashed in for his eyes, and then a pre-baked tongue gets jabbed in for his tongue. And then some pre-baked teeth get jabbed into his gums for his teeth. It's a diamondback snake, so they have these puffy cheeks. And then I use this sharp sculpting tool to carve in the scales around the edges of his lips. Now using my hobby knife with the knife part removed, uh, I begin to use the texture part to roll in a scaly snake texture. I really like the way this looked. On to the big old lion's head. I begin slicing away clay to bring out the basic shape of the lion's head, and then I press the lion's head onto its body. Same technique where I use the ball stylus to jab some eye sockets in. I didn't like the way the first nose came out so I cut it off and I'm replacing it with a square of clay. I then begin to blend the square in and carve away chunks. Now I'm carving in the nose. Now I'm adding two chunks of clay to give it the wrinkly angry lion look. Right here I give him back his bottom jaw and now I'm carving in more angry wrinkles and eye details using a sharp pointy tool. His nose was looking a bit too flat so I added some more clay. Two little caterpillars of clay get added over top of his eyes to give him the furrowed eyebrow that lions have when they're angry. And here's the process of how I make the teeth. For his ears, I roll out a ball of clay, squish it flat, use his ball stylus to press in ear details. After a quick bake in the oven, his ears can now be inserted into his head without squishing his ears, and his pre-baked eyeballs can go in their eye sockets. After making his tongue off camera, I add it into his mouth and begin to blend it in. His teeth from earlier are now baked and ready to insert into his head. I begin adding a bunch of worms of clay for his mane, and I just keep adding until it looks full and thick enough. I made these using cos clay because I was told cos clay is flexible. Do you know how many of these guys I snapped off? Too many! Anyways, cos clay ran over. I Using the flat edge of a small spoon tool, I begin to slice in the hair texture for the lion's mane. Alright, now that the sculpting for the chimera is finished, I'm on to Percy. I made his armature off screen because it was too much hassle to try and film it and make the armature at the same time. I hate armature, my least favorite part of sculpting. And then I begin to add little leaves of clay all over Percy until his body is around the shape that I want it. I add the bottom of his shirt and then I begin to add his long coat that I wanted him to wear. It doesn't stay long for, for long. Using a rounded sheet of clay, I begin to press it into a hood shape and add it onto Percy's back. A little ball makes Percy's head. And I decided I wanted him in a different pose, so here is where I'm changing his pose. A ball stylus for his eyeballs, classic. And then I add his mouth. 
Little nubs of clay blended into his bottoms of his legs make his feet. And a bunch of tiny wormy dealies for his hair. I sandwich a piece of armature wire between two sheets of clay, and then I begin to carve it into a sword shape. This will be Percy's sword Riptide. Percy and the Chimera need a platform to square off on. The base of this platform is a piece of foam that I've carved to the shape I want. So to make the carpet, I begin to blend a bunch of scraps of cost clay into one sheet. Then I use a ball of aluminum foil to stamp a texture in to make it look like carpet. The carpet was all sculpted on top of a piece of aluminum foil so that I can remove it because you can't bake foam in the oven. The Chimera gets pressed into place, same with Percy. And now it's prime time. For the lion's face, I painted the color of old mustard. Old dried mustard. The snake gets painted the color of green olives. And the stomach of the snake gets painted a beige color. The reference pictures I was using for lions all had darker brown towards the bottom of its mane, so I'm painting its mane a darker brown towards the bottom. And then I blend the two colors together for a smoother transition. The fur closest to the shoulders and spine of the goat looks very much custard colored. And then it gets darker as you go down, like it goes Custard, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. And then I kind of try and blend those all together using a wet blending technique. First time I've tried wet blending. I don't know how well it came out. I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? All right, now his hooves get painted black. His tongue and the inside of his mouth get painted a pinky red color. and his teeth get painted pure white. The lion's eyes are black. The snake's tongue is pink, just like the lion's. His eyes are black, just like the lion's. The lion has a black nose. The lion has uh, creamy off-white sections on its face, around its eyes, and its mouth, and its nose. And the lion has strawberry jam all over its teeth, mouth, and face. And after applying the strawberry jam all over, I begin to water it down using water to make it look less thick and vibrant and more like runny. Using a ball stylus, I press on two yellow dots for his irises, two green dots for the snake's iris. Using a brush with a super small tip, I begin to outline all of the diamond patterns on the snake. And then around the diamond patterns, I put white dots to act like little scales separating the different colors of scales. And then a super small ball stylus creates the pupil on the snake and the lion. A base coat of gray for the carpet, a black wash to get into all those recesses and add details. And then a dry brush to bring out all the other bits of detail. Percy has black hair, blue jeans, his orange Camp Half-Blood t-shirt, a blue denim jacket, Percy's skin tone, or as close as I could get, green eyeballs, and the symbol for his Camp Half-Blood t-shirt. And then Riptide gets a coat of uh, bronze, and we're on to the reveals.
Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed. And uh, remember to subscribe because uh, I want you to. All right. Later.